nothing. We say it, bro. That's nothing, bro. That's nothing, bro. How many niggas there are, bro? Look at me. You've already had like three. If we were to go out, would you mean you're asking? If we were to go out? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this is where it all started, you know. Serious memories here from, this is where I grew up my whole life. So many memories, man. You can even hear Luke right now. You can even hear Luke right now. You hear him, he's a funny guy, man. Funny guy. <laughs> I got banned. I got banned from this area because I used to rally up, like, they used to call me like the ringleader. We used to cause trouble, like we used to throw plants at. All these mischief things started here, man. We was not allowed to come to this part no more. A lot of people have moved out. So it's like, I had friends here, friends over there, friends here. They're not here no more, they, they probably moved, they've moved on with their lives now. But yeah, the last time I was here, we did a crate challenge, I was like 18. It's like two years ago. Many guys here and neighbors called the police on us, man. And I remember, hey, I remember someone had the knife. Ah, uh, man, time's changed, man. Time's changed. This is why I went to school. Secondary school, the charter school. This is the best school in Southwark. When I went to my new school, after I got kicked out from here, everyone was about their books. Here, everyone was about party, alcohol, girls and drugs. So literally after school, every single day, there would be a party. We'll go down to Brockwell Park. We'll literally link up all these people from different areas because the girls, the girls knew all the other schools. I remember someone saying, if you didn't go to Lambeth school, you didn't have a school life, but man, this is the best school, I guarantee. If you come here, I don't know if it's still lit now. I remember who was the head teachers? Uh, uh, Mr. Nix or something. I don't know, man, but I remember them. So this is the part everyone used to come to you after school. Well, my, my friendship group came here. Like I said, the school that I went to, there was full of rich white kids. So these rich white kids did have, they didn't care about like nothing. Like in year 10, you would see them sniffing coke and stuff like, as a black man, yeah, like as a have black in me, we used to roll with these uh, white people, these rich white kids, and we used to have the most fun ever. All these areas came in, Tulse Hill, Brixton, Hearn Hill, and no one liked each other. So it was like, we would be in a park one day and we'd see guys come over to try to take our girls, because I can't lie, we had the most prettiest girls in our group, man. So this is one of the chill spots here, the trees. Literally, we would all link up in this park right here. There's a couple of mansions down there, there was mad parties, getting out of their brain, sniffing, everything. And then what we'd do is, we'd ha it'll be a school night and we'll go to a party. Then we'll stay out all night. We'll come in school, we'll cut from school, go to another party. We never used to stay at home, so we used to get reported missing, some of us. I remember one time I didn't go home for a whole week. For one whole week, I used to sleep on buses because I was having so much fun, I didn't want to go home. There was a party in that tower right there, yeah, at the top of the tower. There's a party in there for five days straight. 
Five days straight, everyone was in and out of that house. Bare different guys were just running in there, shooting fireworks. Because so many people was coming in and out, everyone started to rob stuff. So we used to have like all the PS4 games. We had our new laptops, iPads, and that's when the police got involved. Police came. Imagine police raided, police raided that apartment, yeah? That flat. So many of us got caught. Some of us ran out, made it to here. We linked up right here. The police was running up here. Guys, we ran all the way to Brixton. The ones who got caught, some of them tried snips on us, bro. And guess what we did? We went to another party and hid. Stayed out all night, slept on buses, found another house to stay. Because we had so many links, man, around Lambeth, Wandsworth. It was never ending. We didn't care about school, man. We didn't. We just had fun, man. That was it, man. Funny thing is, I never took alcohol. I did drink alcohol then, but I never smoked weed. All these times I was sober more time. I was just literally having the time of my life, man. All fun and games. I was the only one. I was the good one, innit? No smoking, just pure, just pure energy, man. Pure excitement. Some of your legs crossed, smoking a Z. There, man, around, just chilling, man. Ah, oh, literally, this is how it was right on this log, man. I'm, I'm sure people still come here from old friendship groups. Probably a lot of new people now, but maybe some of them are still taking drugs and smoking. Maybe some of them haven't changed. They're still living like they was when they came out of school. Could that happen to a lot of people, man? But yeah, man. Yeah, man, this was the chilling spot. Oh, it looks so small now, but 20 guys will just fit in here. It looks tiny now, because we're, we're older, but 20 guys fitting in here, smoking our weed, banging music. When it rained, we just came here, innit? Because this is shelter. As we used to chill in this park, like I said, people from other areas started to come through. Every time we came to this park, there was fights. In this time is when I started to like realize I wasn't about this type of lifestyle because it started to get deep. When there's girls around, there's beef around as well. So this is why it started to get like hectic and stuff. And in this time is when I started to make YouTube videos. So year 10, I started to make the content and I started to stop, I started to stop chilling here because I moved on from that school and I went to another school. Everything about here used to be beef now. So it went from all the girls, party fun, all the parties and stuff to literally like all these knives and stuff here. So yeah, man, I got out of it, started making content. From all the chaos here, led to me trying to do something more, more different, more diverse, more create a career, man. I didn't want to be like the typical guy that went jail and stuff, man. We wanted to make something big. Pain is elemental to your human experience. Throughout my transformation and change from the bad habits I used to do to installing new habits that I do now, the change is it's quite, it's quite insane. You either live a life of regret or you live a life of discipline. And we've been living a life of discipline right now. Either one is gonna be pain. But would you rather have pain knowing you're trying, knowing you're succeeding, Pain of going to the gym, hurting yourself. Pain of having so many problems to deal with, but each of these problems is making you richer. Or would you rather have pain of not having enough money? Pain of regret, regretting that taking drugs. Pain is elemental to your human experience. Throughout my change, we used to drink alcohol, we used to take weed, we used to do all these drugs. We used to hang out with all these bad people. Um, none of that no more. We started getting in the gym. We first got into the gym this year, 2023, April. We're right now in November. Two months and we got ripped, ripped with abs. We was fully eight pack and now we're in a new transformation. And during this, during the first transformation, we had no, we was fully sober. We didn't have no friends, only friends at the gym. We installed habits like meditating. 
we instilled habits like reading. I couldn't read before. When I was younger, when I was like in primary school, I couldn't read a book, you know? I had to read the books with pictures. But through my transformation, I'm learning new words, new words, new phrases is mad. I feel like people handle grief in different types of ways. For me, example, as soon as my dad passed, I was trying to save his life. It was a mad experience, but as soon as this, as soon as he passed, I left the house and I, I released my business straight away. For me, coping, it was working. That's how I managed to cope, by working hard. Because my dad was a hard worker and I told him, I'm gonna work hard. He saw me change. I got this resilience from him. He went to work. He, has been, he was ill for a while. And the craziest thing is, a couple of weeks before he passed, he was at work. So he was at work ill, still trying to provide for his family all the way to the end, till he couldn't know more. So this ambition, this resilience for non-stop work, I've took this from my father in a new generation of life and trying to implement it on this world for me and myself, for people around me. I think my father's health did impact my transformation because you want to make your family proud. You know, you're your father's son. Your father will be happy if he sees you trying in life. If your father sees you as like a, doing bad things, he's going to think he's failed. And I don't want my father to think he failed raising his son. So we had to make things right. We had to change. He saw me change before he passed. He saw, I remember I opened the fridge and I had the full eight pack. He was like, he was still fine. He was totally fine. He was like, okay, you, oh man. Some mad memories, man. I miss you, dad. I love you, dad. So this is where actually it all started. This is where I first made these YouTube videos right here, where I think we reached our first and subscribers. Literally, it'll be raining, it'll be, it'll be a weather like this right now when it's raining. And what we'll do is we'll be looking for clips. Like we'll just say, oh, clip right there, clip right there. We'll look at like someone and the quicker we get it done, the quicker we go home, the quicker we get a video out. Then of course, summertime packed out. And it's like, there's so many things that happened. All these YouTubers that was here, There'll be YouTuber there, there'll be YouTuber here, YouTuber there. There was the beef with Kankin that was here because this was his spot as well. So you can like come and take people's spots. It's mad, like, ah, oh, some mad beef, man. Some mad times, man. There's videos where it might go viral on Twitter. I remember I made a video like, uh, he, when's the last time you gave head or something like that. It went viral on Twitter. Viral on Twitter. This is where we got our subscribers, man because videos here automatically blew up. So it was literally like a trend, like all was like, I was like year 11, I used to leave school, come here, record. That's it, man. Get your cameraman, record. That's the day done, man. I feel like this helped me a lot, Stratford. But because we started doing these videos here, we linked it to pranks. Imagine if we were to see Stratford YouTubers here right now, like a new generation and that. It would be crazy, man. Every Saturday we hosted like a meet and greet and a meet up. So what we do, we tell everyone to come here 1 p.m. because we had so many, we had so many fans and that would just have all of our videos clips ready. We didn't need to go look for people coming down the stairs. We had all our fans to get in videos. So we used to make like bulk videos, like free videos. This place will be packed guys trying to take pictures, pictures here, pictures there. But I remember I'll be taking a clip and there'll be a person waiting to take a picture of me right there, man. It's crazy, man. I kind of want to see it again, man. I want to see a new generation here because we wasn't the first to do it. Imagine uh, the guys that I recorded with here, we wasn't the first to do it. When I was in year eight, look, even this picture, when I was in year eight with Aria and stuff, like that was like the start of Stratford YouTubers. This is how we started to make it out, started to change, started to get a bit of clout for ourselves right here. See the staircase, the staircase right here, packed with people. So literally everyone would just watch us record here because there'll be a group, there'll be a, a large amount of people here then a massive crowd here as well. So we'll come up here, hit clips. It was literally just a chill spot, man. Just nice sit down here when it's hot. Yeah, man. Do you know, I would love to see Stratford as packed again as we had it, man. 2020, 2019, we had it packed. I don't know, I haven't seen it like that since. Maybe it's still like that. Man, this is the intro spot. Right here, like, I'll be, I'll be like this. We telling me guys, life to lavish here. Back with another video, you know what I'm saying? I'm saying, hey, That was the YouTube video right there, man. That was it. All the Stratford videos, man. We would come up here, we would do our intros, 
charge our equipment here, yeah? Then we'll quickly smoke a little Z and that, you know what I mean? Because we smoked weed back then. Literally, we'll do our intro after we recorded our video. So when we got up here, the day was done. We got our content. It was time to celebrate. Celebrate to me back then was smoking a Z and sleeping. I'm sure there's probably like TikTokers now, young, probably come up here and do TikToks. The last time I was here, I was probably, I think it was this year I was here. March, I did a TikTok. Maybe the floor below, yeah, man. Before we started our transformation, that's the last time I said it. So not too long ago, guys. The pranks now, man. With this robbing people with a spoon video, one of my most viral videos. It, at the time, I wanted, I wanted to just go viral. I wanted to just go viral. I actually went out to people to try to rob them, but took out a spoon instead. Just for YouTube, guys. I wanted that viral. I wanted to do that. And it did go viral, guys. It did do its thing. But guys, to look at this now, it could have ended so badly. It could have ended. So if that person, say he actually had a knife or something, can turn back on me, do you think I can say it's a prank? No. I did get my camera robbed while recording the robbing people with a spoon because I went up to some the wrong people, guys. It's crazy video, man. The threesome prank or any prank with girls, I can't lie, looking at it now, I used to get hate because... The girls didn't like it, but the boys liked it. The boys liked it because they liked to see like girls, me like seeing what girls are on. But the girls would be like, it's embarrassing. How can you expose her like that? And what I would do is I would just go to a girl's house. I would set up a prank. And if there was, if there was okay for me to post it, I would post it. Looking back at it now, it's something you do when you're younger. You know what I mean? Like if you do it now, if you had like a relationship, then all right. But doing it to a random girls now or like girls, you know, that's just exposing them, but it looks bad. It looks bad on them. Our mindset then was to make the best video ever to gain the... I didn't care about money. I'll tell you right now, I did not care about money. I only cared about views and subscribers. So I was like that guy, if I got the most views, da -da -da, I, was, I was there, I was loving it. We didn't care about money. There was a point I didn't even monetize my channel. I could have, but I was too busy recording videos, guys. But yeah, man, looking at these old Stratford videos now, it's just teenage stuff, man. We're men now, we're, we're adults now, we're serious now. I feel like it's kind of crazy though, because I was at such a young age and I was literally able to just travel around making money from YouTube, pranking girls. I literally, I dropped out of college. While people was at college, I was literally meeting girls, recording, traveling in cabs. I wasn't, even to, I wasn't even able to get hotels around here because I was so young. With the money you have, you're starting to do like indulging, like I said, drugs, alcohol, girls, while recording and together, it doesn't mix and match. That's how you lose the focus. That's how you lose the graph. And that's what happened to us guys. We started to go crazy. We actually started to go kind of insane from all of this stuff. And yeah, man, it's like, it's a crazy experience. I think, of course, we, we, we still worked hard. At the end of the day, we still worked hard. And that's what we have right now. We still have the same work ethic, the same grind. We was able to hack, we was able to control our stress levels and still work hard, just like we have now. I feel like if we didn't work so hard, I don't know where we'd be. We could be back in Brockwell Park, beefing those guys that came up to us. Like I could have just like done something with them and could have, it could have just went from there. Now, every time we went to Brockwell Park, it was, you know what I mean? So I think doing YouTube did help me a lot come out of school and start focusing on something instead of focusing on knife crime and all the drugs and stuff. I feel like it saved me, yeah. Pain is elemental to your human experience. It is painful going to the gym every day. It is painful to stop partying. It is painful to stop hanging out with friends. It is painful to stop listening to music. It is painful to quit an addiction. It is painful to say no to people. Whether you're suffering from something bad that happened in your life, that suffering inside you can turn you into a machine if you use it correctly. Throughout my journey on self-improvement, I've installed discipline to come to the gym every single day. This guy is training me. He's helping me to get a six pack. I'm nearly 60 and he's still working on me. I'm over the hill, but he's helped me out. <laughs> this guy is so fit. Remember I said there's like 60 year olds that look like 40 year olds. He's one of them. I'm one of them. Yeah. <laughs> this is the man. Discipline is a skill. 
it's an asset. You need to get off your ass and start working. The days you feel like not going to the gym is the days you're going to push yourself the hardest. The feeling you get right after a good day's workout will encourage you to start conquering your goals in life. You'll be full of excitement, ready to conquer the world. Your confidence will boost. You will go from an introvert to an extrovert. But one thing I tell my family at PLB Fitness is that this is a journey, not a destination. You will not start to see results straight away, but with consistency, cutting out bad habits, you will start to see incredible changes, not only to your physical appearance, but to your mental well-being. You'll start to see life as a bigger picture. This is why I encourage everyone listening right now to buy a gym membership, to start training, to install discipline, to remove bad habits, because it has changed my life. The gym has changed my life forever. One thing I encourage you guys to remember is that you're on a journey, not a destination. So if you don't see results in the first week or a couple of weeks after training and working on yourself, don't be mad. Don't get angry. Do not give up. Because you will see results if you carry on with the consistency and training and self-improvement. You will see a change. It took me 90 days to see a real change. Like I said, I've still been on this self-improvement journey. After I finished my 90 day transformation, it only elevated. After my father passed, it only elevated. Every day we elevate. I don't watch movies, I don't do nothing. We pure work. My purpose is to help young men who cannot help themselves. Women as well. Everyone who cannot help themselves. This is about mental health, this is about physical health, this is about mental well-being. It's been a pleasure having you guys. I hope you enjoyed my journey, where we are today, from where we, we came from. It's been a mad journey, guys. Let's get it. And more to come. This is only the start, you know what I'm saying? If you wanna, if you want one-to-one -one help, you know where to find me, that's it. I'll be looking forward to seeing you guys again. Max Turner, I'm out.